Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, today's video is going to be a little bit of a tour of my bookshelves and where I've got books and what books I've got on my bookshelves. Um, because I'm having a bit of a breakout at the moment, I don't know if it's um, kind of visible on camera, but I'm having a bit of a breakout with um, like eczema or psoriasis on my skin. So I don't really want to put any makeup on and I also don't want to sit in front of a camera because I feel like I look like a thumb so <laughs> I thought I'd do something where I don't necessarily have to talk to camera for very long so I hope you can forgive me for that one um, and I hope you enjoy perusing my bookshelf and seeing all of the books that I've got on my bookshelves and yeah we'll jump straight into it and then I'll come back to you at the end to talk some more so this is my desk space obviously I've got my desk and everything here and above I've got my main bookshelves which if you follow me on Instagram you may have seen the stories of me and Tom building these shelves together and putting them up and then me populating them with all of my books so this is probably what I consider my main bookshelf um and I say I'm aware that like they've only been up for a month so this is all very new but um yeah this is what i am hoping to consider my main bookshelf and you'll see that it is mainly paperbacks and it's a mix of paperback books that i want to keep because i will read them again in the future and paperbacks that i really want to read at some point so there's a bit of a blend of things um i haven't properly organize my bookshelves and I'm a little bit unsure whether I want to. Um, I used to have them arranged alphabetically but then you have a blend of books that you're not too sure whether you want to keep in with things that are very precious. Um, I also personally for my own kind of visible vision of a room I like to keep books at the same height together and um, the only slight difference to the plan on here are my two books um, and the reason that I have them here um, oh, I'll just take that one off as well um yeah the reason I have them two there is because um I do sometimes want to refer to them for quotes and things for Instagram and just other bits and pieces so I have them there to hand but other than that the books are all kind of arranged by size and I'll show you where I keep some of my bigger books and my smaller books in a moment so I can't actually get up onto the top shelves <laughs> but you'll see at the top we've got um hardback books some of which I haven't read yet, such as the A.S. Byatt book and the Carlos Ruiz Zafon one, The Shadow of the Wind. Um, both of those books I am wanting to read soon, but um, haven't got around to it yet. But then there's the Jodie Piku, The Storyteller, is one of my favourites of her books, and um, that's actually signed by her. She came to West Yorkshire, and I went to a, an event with her, and she signed it, so it's up there because it's very special. And then there are other books on here that I have read or that I want to read. Um, obviously you'll notice that there's the two Philippa Gregory ones there that I reviewed in December. And yeah, a few others, the Laura Purcells up on the top. Um, yeah, so there's a mix there. Coming down to this shelf, we've got my Where the Crawdads Sing, which obviously I will be keeping because you all know I really love that book. Um, a few other bits and pieces, um, Sarah Waters, The Paying Guests, haven't actually read that Sarah Waters book yet but I have read, um, which one is the one that I have read? Oh I can't, I can't seem to find it at the moment, um, was it the, the Little Guest or The Little Stranger or something like that? We might find it, it'll be around the house somewhere but I love Sarah Waters books, I think they're brilliant. And then we've got the colour purple and then coming on here we've got a few of my um, holocaust fiction books such as Losing the Dead, The Reader and Primo Levi's If This Is A Man which are all three of those books are fantastic if you're looking for proper holocaust literature. Um, it is next to the, oh no that's The Earth Is Singing. The Earth Is Singing is very good as well. Um, I think it is based on true story um, but it, it definitely reads more like historical fiction whereas the other three on that side are more kind of like first person narrative. Um, although Losing the Dead is kind of like um, generational narrative which is also very interesting. Um, and then we go on to a few other things. You'll notice there's some classics in there. Um, Austin's Northanger Abbey, my favourite Austin, and Sha Anne Bronte, Agnes Grey, 
The English Patient, Shadows and Strongholds. That by Elizabeth Chadwick was one of the first historic historical novels that I ever read. Really got me into um, historical fiction. And a few other bits, random talking with psychopaths and savages, <laughs> um, which was research for a novel, which I haven't finished yet. Uh, the Handmaid's Tale, We Need to Talk About Kevin is a book that I haven't got round to reading yet, but I really, really want to because um, it's about a school shooter, I believe. Um, I just think it's a really interesting topic to write about, so I do want to read that. Oh, coming down to where my arms are a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, um, yeah, less hurting. These are some other ones. Milkman by Anna Burns is fantastic. I have only got halfway through it. I need to go back to it and carry on reading it because it's quite a challenging read, but I think it's absolutely brilliant. It's about an island and the troubles in Ireland and one young girl's experience of living in that place um, and time. So that's very, very good. Um, yeah, a few other historical fiction things there. Another Atwood. Um, and then moving on, we've got Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, of course. Uh, Birdsong. A few other ones. I Capture the Castle, which was one of my favourite books as a teenager. Um, next to The Queen's Fool, which was also another favourite. Um, some other classics. Fingersmith. Uh, Wuthering Heights. I feel like um, Sarah Watts is like a modern classic, by the way. Um, yeah, and a few others on there. Da Vinci Code, of course. Um, <laughs> And a few other ones on there. We've got um, Jane Eyre and we've got A Vindication of the Rights of Woman. And then coming down to this bottom um, one, actually two of those books on there, that um, Alice and Weir, Eleanor of Aquitaine and the Victorians need to go downstairs, really. So I might move them down in a bit because all of these up here, all of these books up here, apart from the Talking with Psychopaths and Savages, and a Stephen King one that I've got. All of them are fiction, um, whereas the Alice and Weir and the Victorians book are both non-fiction, and my non-fiction goes downstairs, which I'll show you shortly. Um, so then we've got my CJ Sansoms. You all know how much I love CJ Sansom. Um, haven't got Lamentation or Tombland up here because I want to get them in the smaller paperback versions before I put them up on this shelf. We've got another few things. Oh, The God of Small Things by Aaron Hattie Roy. If you haven't read that book, please do. You are doing yourself a disservice by not reading it. Um, the, re <laughs> the reason why that looks beautiful at the moment is because that's a new copy. Um, I am hoping to start this season series soon. It's the Antonia Hodgson, Thomas Hawkins series, series. I've got, there's that one, and then there's also a Death at Fountains Abbey, that's the, another one in the series, but the first one, which I think is called The Devil in the Marshall Sea, that's downstairs, um, and I need to I need to start with that one first. But yeah, um, I am starting that series. A few other bits and pieces, um, Susan Hill, The Black Sheep, um, oh no, it's just called Black Sheep, trying to get through all of the Susan Hill canon as well as uh, Wilkie Collins. If you don't know, Susan Hill is an excellent gothic horror writer. Um, a few other things. Alone in Berlin. It's another um, World War II narrative. Excellent. Thomas More's Utopia. I read this when I was a young girl because, basically because Drew Barrymore read it in um, the Cinderella adaptation um, that she was in. And I read it because of her and actually really loved it. So um, there's a lot of kind of history and politics involved in it. So it's not just like a standalone thing. Um, a couple of little bits and pieces here. 500 Words You Should Know was bought for me by my sister. And then I have a Best Love Poems book, which is basically loads of random poems. But I keep them up here again because I like to share poems and things on Instagram and stuff every so often. So they're there for that reason. A little picture of baby Tom. No. Tom found it the other day when he was clearing some stuff out in the cellar. So I just have a little picture of baby Tom there. Because <laughs> we don't really have anywhere to put it, but I can't... I just can't resist a little baby face. Anyway, um, 
yeah, a few other books. P Laura Purcell's Bone China here. Um, Adele Parks, The Other Woman's Shoes. Um, that is another signed book. Um, basically, Adele Parks went to Leicester University, which is where I went, and she was an English major as well, same as me. And, well, I say major, that makes us sound American. She studied English, I studied English, and then she obviously has become a very, very well known novelist. And I went to see a talk by her at Leicester um, when I was still a student and uh, yeah she basically signed that, the copy of that book for me. So yes that is all of the fiction that is on the shelves and a couple of little non-fiction pieces like um, this Stephen King on writing. I feel like every writer has a copy of this book. Um, I started reading it but I didn't get a chance to read it all. I feel like I needed some um, of those little tiny um, tabs for marking pages and things like that. So I might get that round to that soon because I think Stephen King is a genius. Yeah. Um, also just to say that I do have a copy of The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith. I actually got that from a charity shop. I didn't buy it. Um, I don't believe in buying anything from J.K. Rowling first hand anymore because I don't agree with her belief system um, but I already had it when I was made aware of all of the horrific things that she was saying and it did come from a charity shop so um, I haven't read it yet. So underneath my desk, <laughs> please excuse the state obviously it's an under desk space it's never going to look amazing is it, are a load of other books that I either need to read or need to get rid of. Um, I'm not going to go into most of those, but um, yeah, just know that there is a pile of books there. If you really want me to go through that pile of books at some point, let me know. Um, and I might do it on um, an Instagram Live or something like that, but there are more books down there. Now into our bedroom. I've had to put the hideous overhead lights on, so I'm sorry if the colour goes really cold now. I basically bought the wrong light bulbs for these bedrooms and it makes it look like a dentist office. But I'm sure you can forgive me. So up here is my collection of really small books. So they're still paperbacks, but they're the paperbacks that are a lot smaller. Um, so I put them up here basically because I ran out of space in the other room. Um, a massive mix of things up here, to be honest. Some historical fiction, a lot of Raymond E. Feist, which are actually Tom's books. They're the ones up at the back there. Uh, we've got Tolstoy's War and Peace. Haven't got through that yet, but I am determined to read it at some point. Uh, Night by Eli Weasel, which is another um, Holocaust book. Sir Thomas Mallory's Le Mort d'Artour, which is um, the King Arthur story. Read that for university. Um, and then just a few other random stuff. Bede's History of the English Church, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. <laughs> Underneath uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, so yeah. It's quite a few things up there. Some Elliot, some Austin. Um, and a point horror, which if you can, if the eagle-eyed can spot the point horror, um, let me know. So yeah, there's a few different bits up there. And then we come down to the bottom of our bed. <laughs> there are more books. Um, and these are books that are just... Well, Tom thought it would make it really nice if we had um, some books at the end of the bed on top of the coffee table. And I agreed. So we've just put a few random ones here. I do actually need to sort some of these out because I'm not keeping all of these. Um... So we've got the m biggest paperback I have ever seen, which is Lamentation. Um, I need to get that in a smaller paperback version. Uh, a Bronte, some Simone de Beauvoir, Ken Follet, World Without End. I do love, absolutely love the Ken Follet books. Um, it started with... Oh, God, I've forgotten the name of the first one now. Oh, I don't actually think I've got a copy of the first one. I need to get another copy. I used to have one. It's the one where they build the massive cathedral um, and it was made into a TV show and it starred Eddie Redmayne and I can't remember what it's called now. Pillars of the Earth. There you go, I've remembered it. Pillars of the Earth. I love that book. Um, I just love how long it is. It means it goes into like loads of detail and I really love that in a historical novel. Um, what else have we got? <laughs> Um, a couple of random ones. I don't really know anything by Louise Douglas or Rachel Joyce, but I'm looking forward to reading them. I've got another copy of Northanger Abbey, because why not? Um, a few other things. The hundred-year-old man who climbed out of the window and disappeared. Looking forward to reading that. My mum read that and she said it was brilliant. Um, 
oh god we've got the perfect heresy that's a non-fiction as well you see i've got all these bloody non-fiction books mixed in with my fiction that needs to go downstairs uh kate moss the burning chambers kate moss is another um historical writer who i absolutely love um i don't know if you've read her oh god what was her one called um her really famous one labyrinth that was it her book labyrinth was absolutely unbelievable i loved that book um i think actually you might have seen another kate moss up on the top shelf in the paper in the hardbacks before um because i can't remember what that one was called it's got a brown cover um but yeah i haven't read that one either but i have read this the burning chambers in fact i bought it um when i went to portugal probably like 2019 2018 and i think i got through it in like three days so yeah loved that um robin d'angelo white fragility um why it's so hard for white people to talk about racism working through that at the moment as you can probably see some little tabs coming out the top of the book wild by cheryl strayed oh absolutely loved that book i mean i did love it there were bits where um she went into kind of her background with her mother and her relationships and this that and the other i wasn't too much interested in that i love just loved the story of her trekking through the wild so and then a couple of other things oh <laughs> another sneaky copy of my book there <laughs> that i genuinely did not realize that was there um that jody piku handle with care i'm getting rid of as well um so I need to take that downstairs. Like I say, I've got, I've got a lot of, still a lot of book organising to do. Um, I'm trying to be quite ruthless and get rid of things that I definitely know I'm not going to read again. Just because until I can have a proper library in my house, I don't have space for the number of books that I've got. So let's move on because I'm, I know I'm comfortable sat down, but we can't sit down here forever. <laughs> Over here, we've got more books. <laughs> so... We've got my copies of Harry Potter. Bought these decades ago. In fact, I bought them as they came out. So, um, is there one missing? No, no, the Deathly Hallows are the bottom, the last one, aren't they? Um, yeah, bought these obviously as the books came out, as they were published. Um, I love the Harry Potter canon. I'm not going to stop reading it. I'm not going to stop watching the films. But obviously I'm not going to support anything that J.K. Rowling does in the future. But I do love the Harry Potter books. I love the Harry Potter universe. It meant a lot to me as a teenager growing up. And yeah, I've already got them. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll do a, a more of an in-depth discussion about Harry Potter and J.K. Rowling because I've got some very, very strong opinions on her now. So anyway moving on we've got queenie and we've got the poisonwood bible um and we've got rivers of london by ben aronovich um these are books i am wanting to read imminently that's why they're up here and then down here <laughs> we've got a pile of books the elizabeth chadwick uh, trilogy there um i've been reading just because i want to read them and then donate them because we're not going to keep them but they are really good um i've really um enjoyed getting to know eleanor of aquitaine's story because i didn't actually know a lot about her even though i'd done medieval history at a level um i kind of focused more on the crusades than Ele eleanor of aquitaine so yeah enjoyed getting to know her that philip roth the plot against america makes it look like it's some kind of manifesto for like um extremism it's not it's a book about uh, fear invaded every Jewish household in America. Not only had Lindbergh publicly blamed the Jews for pushing America towards a pointless war with Nazi Germany, but upon taking office as the third, 33rd president of the United States, he negotiated a cordial understanding with Adolf Hitler. What then followed is the historical setting for this startlingly startling new book by Pulitzer Prize winner Philip Roth, who recounts what it was like for his Newark family and for a million such families all over the country during the menacing years of the Lindbergh presidency. So, sorry, no, it's not a, it's not an alternative narrative. It's kind of like um, an auto, a biography type thing. Hi everyone, Charlotte jumping in from the future here to say that this is all completely wrong. <laughs> As I was talking about this book. I was thinking in my mind, I'm sure that Charles Lindbergh was an aviator and not a president because I remember that his son um, had been kidnapped uh, back in the day and I was like, I'm sure he wasn't a president. Anyway, I've looked into it. Charles Lindbergh definitely was never a president of the US. 
this is a fictional book and it is alternate history. So I was right in what I initially thought. It is an alternate history book. It's a little bit similar to The Man in the High Castle um, in that it presents kind of an alternate America in the lead up to the Second World War and the kind of... It talks a lot about um, Jewish lives in America in the lead up to the Second World War and all of the... Um, racism that they were experiencing and I think it's supposed to kind of blend a little bit of fact and fiction together but it's definitely a fiction book so I just wanted to clear that up um, just in case you were thinking about reading it. It does sound very very good and I'm definitely looking forward to reading it but it is not a, not a factual book, it is indeed a work of fiction. <laughs> Sorry about the confusion there guys. Um, but yeah I'm really looking forward to reading that but these like I say are books that I'm trying to I'm trying to keep books that I want to read and then pass on um, on my bedside table so that I can actually pressure myself into reading them and then getting rid of them. <laughs> um, Daphne de Maurier, J Jamaica Inn, I'm not getting rid of that, but um, somehow it's ended up on this pile. Um, it's one of the books that I've wanted to read for a long time. Again, Daphne de Maurier is another writer that I'm trying to get through the entire canon as research for my modern gothic novel that I'm writing. The Other Berlin Girl by Philippa Gregory. Um, loved Philippa Gregory when I was growing up. Loved the other, loved the Other Berlin Girl. Um, did my undergraduate dissertation on her books, so that's there just to read through again. A uh, couple of others, oh, Ashes of London and The Muse. So that's it for my bedside table. Right, I've come downstairs because the rest of my books are down here and I've opened up my bookcases so that I can show you my old collection of books. So these are books that I've collected mostly, to be honest, over the last three years while we've been living back here in the UK. I did have a few old books of my own. Um, that I had just collected from secondhand bookshops and things, but the most of these I've collected over the last three years. So I'm not going to go into massive detail about what's on here. If you do want me to do a in-depth look at some of the older books in my bookshelf, then maybe we could do that if my channel gets to 500 subscribers because I am trying to grow this channel and this community. So recommend me to your friends who love books. And when we hit 5,000, uh, not 5,000, <laughs> when we hit 500 subscribers, then we will have a look through my old book collection, including some which are very special. That's all I'm gonna say. But you can have a quick look at what we've got here. These are all kept in glass cabinets because um, they have to be preserved in terms of like temperature and humidity and that kind of thing. So the best thing you can do if you have a house just that's just like ours is to keep them in a cabinet. So that's why I got these. So yeah, I love these books. I absolutely love having them in the cabinets. I think they're really beautiful. They make um, really lovely kind of... Um, just display like when you come in the house and you can see all the books in the cabinets I just think they look really lovely um, but also I've always wanted um, a proper collection of books like an old collection of books and this is my start this is the start of my collection sorry just had to uh, had to let Tom in he's been out washing the car um, yeah so this is the final bookcase this is, like I say, a bit of a mishmash of lots of different things. The top two shelves are my non-fiction books, mainly books that I've either studied for my degree or I've just collected over the years. There's also a lot of books on here about country houses and females' lives and this, that and the other because I've bought them as research for my own books. So there's lots of things like, obviously, um, you know that I wrote about Harriet Granville in, um, no, not Harriet Granville, sorry, Harriet Cavendish, in my first book, Lady of the House. So those are two books about her. Um, we've got The Secret Diaries of Miss Anne Lister, who features in my second book. Um, other country house things, you know, Spinsters in England, The Women's Domain, Life in the English Country House. All of those were research. Um, coming down, there's more English country house books. Um, Kate Aidy's Fighting on the Home Front, that was, I 
went to see a talk by Kate Ada um, a number of years ago in Huddersfield and bought that book there. I think it's signed, I'm not sure. Um, a few other things, a textbook on the Holocaust from when I did my Holocaust literature module, um, more Country House books, book about the Parkers at Saltram, um, Anne Robinson from my second book, Used to Live at Saltram, um, other bits and pieces. Gender in the 18th century is a very good book. Yeah, so those are all non-fiction um, kind of research books and ones that I use for my research. If you would like more detail on that, I am thinking about doing a video in the next few months, not next few months, next few weeks maybe, looking at um, how I research and how I research my books. So we might delve into some of these books a bit more deeply then. And then going on down this middle shelf, kind of second to last shelf, is random fiction. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, that one and the next one down. These two are both kind of random fiction books. Um, mainly big um, hardbacks that um, don't fit upstairs. So I've got them down here. There's The Devil in the Marshall Sea that I was talking about by Antonia Hodgson. That's the first in that um, Thomas Hawkins series. A few others. A Gillian Anderson book. I like Gillian Anderson, um, and I haven't read that yet, so I'm looking forward to reading that. Um, yeah, just some general big books. My Bridget Jones's Diaries, Tom's uh, Childhood Lord of the Rings collection, um, and then a couple of other little books from when we were kids. <laughs> um, my Roald Dahl collection from when I was little. And yeah, a few other bits and pieces. Joanne Harris, Peach Tom and Sue Lecure. Um, I, again saw Joanne Harris speak live, um, she was absolutely brilliant. Another Ken Follier book, Tombland, there's my Tombland by CJ Sansom. And Brick Lane by Monica Alley, I haven't read that, but I do want to. Uh, Bring Up the Bodies by Hilary Mantel. Uh, controversial opinion, I didn't like it, in fact I didn't even get through the first chapter. So I'm intending to go back and read that because I know so many people have said they like it. And then right at the bottom, We've got a really random mix of books. <laughs> um, some of them are childhood books from when I was little. My Beatrix Potter and my Hans Christian Andersen. And then Tom's got his Rupert Annuals and his encyclopedias from when he was little. And yeah, just a few random things like dictionaries and atlases that you accumulate but you're not really ever sure what you're going to do with them. So that is it for uh, my very quick bookshelf tour. Hope you don't mind it being a bit of a shorter video this week. Um, like I say, don't really want to be on camera at the moment. So <laughs> hopefully I'm looking a bit better when um, I come for my next video. But yeah, hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions about any of the books that you've seen on my bookshelf or there's any particular genres or areas or particular books that you want me to talk about, let me know. Yeah, do follow me on Instagram. It's at Charlotte Furness Writer. I'll put my little fancy diddly what's it up here so you can see what it looks like. And if you are feeling very generous, then would you consider buying me a coffee? Um, it's a way to help support my writing and support what I do. Um, you can buy me a coffee from as little as £3, which is always nice. Um, yeah, so I'll, all the details will be in the description box below. And I will see you again soon. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye!